All right, first thing, just disclaimer, I am by no means an expert on anything about this boat. That being said, I have owned it for about a year and a half now, and I've sailed it a lot. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to kind of put together a video showing how I set it up and how I rig it up to sail it. Hopefully you get something out of it. Okay, so first thing, stepping the mast. Probably the most difficult part. Let me go ahead and turn on this camera too. All right, so step in the mast. It's a lot easier with two people because um, you could have somebody grab that end and walk it back as you grab this end and then you can fit the foot of the mast into the floor plate here. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to do it solo just so that you can do it no matter how many people you have with you. That should show you exactly what goes on. But basically the mast has two notches in the foot of it. And you notch this bottom one here first, and then you pivot it upwards and then it nests in the second one. Now you don't actually need two pins, but I just have two just because I had two and you might as well use both if you have them. Um, all right, that being said, let's go ahead and step the mast. So I'm just walking down this way until I get to the middle of it so I can lift up the whole thing without it wanting to go seesaw either direction. Okay. So when you have the mast, and th thankfully it's not too heavy, um, as you can see, I'm just holding it right here. Um, you will want to make sure that the mast or the, uh, the sail track right here is down. So I'm going to have to flip it. And then hopefully that camera up there captures what I'm doing with the foot of the mast. But I'm just stepping it in. Right. Right there. And the hardest part right here. So you're gonna wanna have to, I'm putting it on my shoulder right here. Get pretty forward of it. So you can then put your foot up in the boat. Put a hand down here for stability. And then I just lift it up. Both feet in the boat. And now I can just pivot the mast upwards. Just walk it up, watching my step so I don't step on something slippery and fall. And there we go. Now that the mast is up, boom. Okay, I had to redo this just because I forgot to put that strap there. Um, do that first. I just have this short ratchet strap sort of a thing. It's not really a ratchet, um, but you can just tighten it, loosen it. I use that to hold the mast up as I attach the forestay. So as you can see, keeping this tension so the mast doesn't fall down. And then I just tighten this guy all the way. Not touching it. No forestay, no shrouds. But it's going down just fine. So now since this is tensioned all the way, I can easily attach the pin for the forestay here. Just like that. Put my my retaining ring in there. Beautiful. Now that I got the forestay on, you can go ahead and loosen this guy. So now the mast is being held up by just the forestay right here. You can go ahead and take off your strap. I'm just gonna toss it down there. Now I like to set up the trapeze wires first before the shrouds, if you have them, just cause it's a little bit easier, I think. I leave my 
shock cord with the, the clips there on the boat. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook these bad boys on. There's one. And here is two. Now for the shrouds. I'm gonna hop off the boat for this just to make it easier. Yep, there we go. So I'm going to take these pins out. I'm going to put this guy in first. Just like that. And the first shroud will be a lot easier than the second one just because there should be some tension on it to keep the rigging all tight. Okay, there's that one, let's walk around. Okay, same deal, but it'll be a little bit tighter this time. Just keep that in mind. There we go. And the pin is now secure. All right, so the mast is fully self-supporting now. You don't need to worry about that anymore. Now we can hop into the boat and connect the boom to the mast. So I kind of keep it tightened up with the main sheet here, so I'm going to loosen that first. Just like that. There we go. All right. Now this side of the boom that attaches to the mast will have this little kind of attachment thing. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but as you can see, it slides into that track there. Just make sure that this sail track is on top of the boom. Otherwise, you won't be able to use it. <laughs> All right, there we go. And I believe all C-15s have this, but there's this little stopper here that I have tightened down, which you can adjust to adjust how low or high the boom sits off of the mast here. Um, I keep it pretty high just for comfort in the cabin. But here we are. Um, I like to loosen up the out hull here initially, just so that when I am putting the mainsail on, I don't need to worry about that and it'll be nice and easy. Jib sail, mainsail. Time to rig up the mainsail. Now, normally, I would put the boat in the water first and I would tie it to the dock. Or if it's on the beach, I would have it on the beach. Um, and then I want to put the mainsail up. But for today's explanation, I'll just be doing it on the trailer here. Just to show you how it fits in the tracks and all that. All right. So with the mainsail, first thing you want to do is find the tack of the sail, which is this corner of the sail. You've got the head of the sail, the tack of the sail, and the clue of the sail. Now the tack of the sail for the Coronado is going to have a section that looks like this. So you got this rope that goes up to the head of the sail, this rope that goes across to the clue of the sail, and you've got these two eyelets. This eyelet gets attached, secured by this pin here in the gooseneck assembly of the boom. This eyelet here, we will be tensioning it downwards with this rope here, the Cunningham rope, tensioning it, tensioning it downwards and then attaching it to this cleat here. But because of the opening of the track being up here and the sail needing to be 
down here, you'll want to put this section of the sail up first, just like that. I usually go pretty much all the way down just so it's nice and loose and easy to work with. And then you can feed the entire bottom of the sail into this track this way. So go ahead and find the clue of the sail, the rear bottom corner. Start feeding that into the track, just like so. And again, this is easier with two people because you can have your crew on the back pulling the sail for you. But today we'll kind of have to inch it along because we're going so low. I'm just kind of doing both, both hands at once here. I will eventually have to start doing that a little bit. And keep going until you can attach this eyelet to this pin here. So we need a little bit more. There we go. So go ahead and unscrew this pin here. Just like that. Go ahead and put that eyelet in the middle there. And then screw the pin back into that hole. Just like that. Tighten it a good bit. A good bit right there. All right. Now we can attach the out hole, this guy, to the clue eyelet of the sail. Let me open up this shackle here. Now, kind of a cheat code with this. Mine didn't originally have this, but I got one of these kind of C-shaped shackles, which makes life a lot easier. Um, see how it kind of curves back on itself a little bit, so it's like pinching like that. What that helps with is once I get it into the eyelet, I can twist it and it can just hold itself just like that. So you don't need to worry about holding it as you're screwing the shackle back in, just like this. Makes it really easy. Really easy. Once that's tight, straighten it back out, just like that. All right, now for the main halyard here. Now you always wanna make sure with the halyards that the lines and wires on both sides are free all the way up and you're not gonna get caught or wrapped around something as you're hoisting the main or the jib sail. So for us, it looks pretty good. This guy right here is the other side of it, as you can see. So now it's time to hoist the mainsail. We can uh, let's put this through here just so it doesn't fly away on us. I'm gonna free up my main halyard shackle here. I've got kind of this spring loaded twist shackle where you've got the little key keyhole there and the pin has the same key, keyhole shape so when you put it in there and twist it past those bumps. It's now stuck on there and it's not gonna come out just like that. So now we gotta find the head of the sail, the top of the sail. And I just keep my main sail rolled up with all of the battens still in it just to make things easier. I used to take them out, but I realized, wait, this is a waste of time. I can just store them with the battens in there, so. That's what I got going here. Now we've got the head of the sail attached to the main halyard. And the way you feed it into the track is pretty much the same way that you fed this section of the sail into the track, but this time you're just pulling it straight up. Let me step up here. Now, particularly if it's a windy day, you don't want to let go 
of your halyard here because the wind might take it away from you and then you'll have to go chase it down or grab it with a stick as it's blowing up off the top of the mast. I've had that happen before. <laughs> Don't make that mistake. Now the wind's kind of funky today and I it's kind of coming a little bit at a funky angle so I'm not actually going to hoist the sail all the way up just because that'd be really difficult and I wouldn't want to endanger the boat tipping over or anything like that. But as you can see, there's that same track opening that we use for this part of the mainsail. You just take the head of the sail with that rope and you feed it in as you're hoisting. So hoist and feed in, just like that. The battens, if you leave them in like this, well, I guess you'll have to have them in at this point, but they might kind of make it kind of difficult to hoist the sail. So you just want to like hold the battens out like that as you're hoisting it and you just keep going. I'll stop there, but you get the idea. Keep feeding and hoisting all the way up. Um, and then once you're done, tension it down all the way. I typically will tighten it just enough to where the boom of the, of the sail starts to raise up like half an inch or so above that stopper pin, because then we'll tension it back down later with the uh, downhaul there, um, or the uh, the boom vang, the kicker. It's got multiple names, I guess. But once you've done that, you can go ahead and tighten this mainsail halyard as tight as you need to, nice and tight, and then go ahead and cleat it off on this bad boy right here. Just like that. Now one little thing that I've added to the boat is this little bungee strap here. I can show it to you. Just kind of like a tarp tie sort of a thing, tarp bungee. Um, I just have it uh, around the, um, the mast partner here. Just attach it down there. And I keep this here so that with my extra lines here from the halyards, I can just roll those up and stuff those underneath that bungee just to keep them out of the way and it just makes life easier. Um, prevents tangling and keep, keep, you know, keeps them out of the way of your crew and all that kind of stuff. Now, the way you trim and tighten the mainsail, you've got your boom vang here, which just pulls down on the boom and provides tension that way. The boom vang is as you can see, connected by a little shackle to the um, mast plate here, floor plate, into one of the spare holes. So you'll just pull this nice and tight. Not as it is like this, but after you've raised the sail and it's all cleated and all that kind of stuff, you will go ahead and tighten it nice and tight. Um, I typically tighten it enough to where I start to see the boom pull down a few inches. Um, and I, I always do this first. Okay. And once you've rigged up the boom vang, you can go ahead and tighten the outhaul, which is this slide lever guy right here. The wire runs back and attaches to that little rope pulley in the back that we attached earlier to the clue of the sail with the little baby shackle. And all we do to tighten this, I typically will sit like this around the mast so I've got some leverage. You pull down on this pin here to loosen it and you just pull this all the way up. I'm not going to pull too hard because the sail is not actually up yet. But I'll pull it all the way back and then I'll release the pin and kind of shake it until it falls into the hole that's further back this way. Now once you've done the boom vang, the out hole, you can now do the Cunningham, which will be, it'll look more like this first. So what you'll do is you'll take this rope here, that for me is tied to the bottom of the gooseneck assembly there. You'll put it up through, this eyelet and then you'll just tighten this down nice and tight just like that you'll want it to get as far down as possible so you, you know you'll have 
rigged up the sail appropriately if you have um, kind of this fold here that runs down the sail when the sail is all the way up. You want it to look like that. This eye should be pulled almost all the way down, if not all the way down. And then once you're done tightening that, you can just go ahead and tighten and secure the line to this shackle, or not shackle, this clue or cleat right here. But now I'm going to take it all down and show you the jib sail. Alright, so let's just talk about the jib cars real quick. The jib sheet will be going around the shrouds and the mast like that. And it'll come up through this jib car and up through that jib car. With the two loose ends, I typically will tie a knot in the middle. Um, now I've seen multiple different jib car cleat setups. Um, mine just had these tracks. And so I bought these jib cars that just you loosen like this. And you can just slide it off, slide it on just like that. Um, honestly, I don't know what these were originally for. I thought they were for the jib, but if they were, I, th I think they'd be going the other way. So not super sure about that one, but I don't use these. I use these for the jib sheet. Comes up through there, just like that. Cleats that way. I keep these nice and tight and further forward, um, just to make it easier for my crew to, um, work the jib sheet and all that sort of stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and cover the uh, the rudder and tiller real quick as well. I keep it underneath the hiking straps as I'm trailering the boat, just to kind of keep it under control. Um, it's kind of big and clunky to put in the car. You could do it if you wanted to. I just keep it here. I haven't had problems with that. Um, there is one thing that I made, this guy and I wanted to show you how that works. So the rotor goes in just like that. Make sure it's pressed all the way down. And this tab here is in, because that kind of is how it locks in. So what I did is I put this little bent piece of metal on the bottom of the wooden part of my tiller extension. Or I guess this is just the tiller. But basically I use this as a little hook. So when I hook this guy in, it works as an autopilot a little bit. It'll stay in the middle. They won't go too far side to side. So if I'm sailing solo in light wind and I have to adjust something on the front of the boat or I'm coming into the dock, I can use this guy if I don't want to turn and I want to keep going straight. Also now that I'm here, I'll show you what I did with my strange Frankenstein tiller extension. So I've got two tiller extension handles. I've got this one, which is kind of short, and it's meant to be more of a normal length, I guess. And really, it's kind of even a little bit longer than the normal one. I think the normal one that came with the bow was three feet. This is probably like four feet, maybe three and a half feet. But as you can see, I have this pin bungeed through this hole just like this the bungee so I don't lose the pin but at, what you can see is um, these holes will line up so I can put this guy in just like that now it doesn't always line up so I'll twist it around just like that there we go tiller extension now the reason why I did this, well, two reasons. First re reason was because my original tiller extension, the little plastic stopper on the end broke off. So I replaced it with this one. This is um, just, I think, three quarters of an inch thick aluminum pipe. Um, I just cut it to size and I put some shrink wrap um, grip on the end of it here so it feels good I put it on just like this 
drill the hole that was the right size for the pin that I chose. And then I just took a small section of shock cord and tied it to the pin, retaining uh, pin here of the universal joint and the um, key ring of the pin. Now the reason I chose to do it like this with the segments is because I also have a longer version of one of these. It's about yay big. Um, so it'll stick out to like here. So now I use that for when I'm helming on the trapeze of this boat. This boat's not really made to do that, but I did it for fun and it has worked so well that I just figured I'd share it. Obviously they make longer tiller extensions if you just want to, you know, unscrew it and reattach it and stuff like this, but I figured this plug and play version would be pretty easy and convenient. One thing to note, I keep this paddle here up in the cuddy hatch just in case the wind dies and I have to paddle in. I used to sail in Colorado, so that happened every now and then. Um, here in San Diego, it's probably not ever going to happen, but it's here just in case I need it. Okay, time for the jib sail. Now the jib sail has the same general shape. We've got the tack on the front there, the clue, which will be the back bottom corner, and the head of the sail, which will be hoisted up to the way to the top of the forestay attaches to the mast. First thing I like to do is I like to find the tack of the sail, which is the front corner. I'll take this guy. And I've got this shackle attached here so that it can attach right into that hole just like this yep make sure that's nice and tight now what I do is I will typically unfold the sail a little bit kind of run my hand along the front of the sail that has this wire on the inside Just make sure the sail is flat and not too folded and twisted. And then I'll find the clue of the sail, which is the back bottom corner, and it has this eyelet here. I will typically take my jib sheet around the mast and the shrouds and the jib cars here um, and just kind of lay it in its spot before I put the boat in the water. That's just one less step, makes it easier for later. Now you don't need a shackle, you could just tie it to the actual sail itself, but I like having the shackle just because it makes it a little bit easier to set up and I'm not, you know, constantly tying and untying knots just to rig up the jib sail. But what you'll do is you'll find the middle of the jib sheet, in this case I have it already set, and you'll want to separate your two lines here and spread them across the boat. Just untangle it here. All right. So I take the first side. First side here. Go around the shroud. And then up through the jib car, just like that. And for now, you can just pull it through into the boat and just kind of leave it there. We'll come back to that in a bit. On the other side, you'll want to grab the other end of the jib sheet and do the same thing. Make sure it's in front of the mast, just like that. If you've got the shock cord there for the, um, the wires, just make sure it's above those and not underneath them or wrapped around them or in any way like that. Around the shroud, up through the jib cars, just like last time. Oh, and I got a knot. Figures. 
figures. Okay. Up through the jib car, just like that. Into the boat. Now what I do, I take both ends of the jib sheet, like so, and I tie them together with two overhand knots. The way I do that, I make a loop in the first one, lay it over the other side, go up through to finish the knot, just like that. And then same thing with the other side. And this will never come undone. Now that we've got the jib sheet all taken care of, we can go ahead and attach in the center of the sheet to the clue of the jib sail. Just like so. And then once this is done, we can go ahead and attach the halyard to the head of the sail. So making sure the sail is not twisted or anything like that, go ahead and find the head of the sail. I've got this little wire bracket coming out here. You're, you will want to attach the halyard of the jib to the head of the sail, just like this. I'm just gonna stuff this guy back in here so it doesn't fly away. There, I don't trust it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and attach the halyard to the head, just like this. And now the sail is ready to be hoisted. Same thing, check the halyard to make sure it's not wrapped around anything or caught on anything, so you won't have trouble hoisting it. Go ahead and loosen up your jib halyard so you can raise it. And if it's windy, you might wanna keep a hand on the sail so it doesn't fly away from you. And just raise it up, just like that. Just like that. Now once the sail's up, you can go ahead and tighten it. So pull down nice and strong on the halyard. Wrap it around the cleat. Give it a half hitch or two. I usually only do one, and it usually is plenty, but some people s swear by doing two. I think it's kind of personal preference, depending on the condition of your boat, maybe. And then with the same thing that I did with the main sail, or the main halyard, I wrap up the extra halyard for the jib and stuff it under the bungee here. And also rule of thumb for if you're setting up or taking down or anything like that, you always wanna make sure um, that your loose lines, so like if you're taking the jib down, um, to bring the boat in. Just go ahead and tie off the loose jib halyard again just to make sure it doesn't fly away because it's just a hassle when it does and nobody wants to chase after their lines on a windy day. What is this black bag you ask? Well, it's just a little cheat code that I have for anything you might have in your pockets like your wallet or your phone or your car keys and also um, any spare lines. Um, the boom vang line, once you've tightened it, there's usually, you know, there might be a decent amount hanging down. I've got this bag here with the molly and I basically just have some Velcro straps to attach it to the mast. Now I'm showing you this now because it's open and easier to see, but you would wanna do this if you were to do this after you've raised your mainsail 
um, because if your boat's like mine, your main halyard will be attached down here, which is exactly where you have to put this, so this will be gone. But basically, I've just got some simple Velcro straps and I just attach it around the mast. Just like this. Same with the bottom. Velcro makes it easy and super tight. Um, I use this zipper bag to put phone, wallet, keys, stuff like that. Just keeps it out of my pocket, so if we capsize, it'll stay dry. Um, it's not a dry bag, um, but as long as you don't turtle the boat, anything attached to the mast in this section is not going to be wet because a capsize, the boat goes this way, the water line is going to be like here. Um, so it's not going to get touched by the water. This stuff pouch here I use for um, my dock line. I've got a white rope that I just tie to the same big hole that the trailer hook is attached to. And when I'm sailing the boat, I keep it tied on there, but I will coil up the rope, the dock line, and stuff it into this bag. And I can just tighten it like that. So just, you know, a tip if you find you're wishing you had an extra compartment for things or stuff like that. This is my solution. Okay, let's talk centerboard. So the centerboard is rigged. First of all, it pivots down like this from this point with the brackets. And it's rigged with this line here which has a cleat and then it goes through the blocks here. You've got a two to one little purchase system there, which pulls up on the top corner. And then it goes around to the other side as well. As you can see right now, I've got the line pulled and the centerboard is all the way up. Now, they also have this big bungee here, which I have attached all the way back here. So right now, it's pretty tight because it's all the way up, but I would attach it here. And I typically do that after I've lowered it. Um, if you were beach launching the boat, I think I would probably attach this first. It would just be more of a muscle. Um, but typically, I dock launch the boat. And from the dock, first thing I do, always, once the boat is in the water tied up on the dock, is I put the centerboard down. Um, it provides a lot of stability, so when you're moving around on the boat, hoisting the sails, stuff like that, um, the boat won't rock as much. Um, and just gets it out of the way. But here, as you can see, it comes up that way. So to lower it, I'll just uncleat that side, or this side, if this is the one that's tightened. Um, it's all just one rope, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but you can uncleat that, and it'll drop. Um, sometimes it sticks up, you might have to kind of kick it down or push it down. Um, but then once you get it past that stuck point, it usually just swings freely into the water. Um, and then typically, I won't ever even touch it. Um, the reason why you've got the adjustments is because, you know, this boat was built for racing originally and to get every ounce of speed that you can on the downwind legs of, um, or downwind points of sail, you would want to raise the centerboard a little bit, maybe halfway or so, because you, you wouldn't need as much sideways, um, uh, sideways help because the wind's going to be pushing you down and not to the side as much. Um, but I mean, with a boat that is this big, has this much displacement, um, I don't really think it's worth it. So I just put it all the way down and I just forget about it. I just leave it down there. Um, yeah, no problems with that. And then obviously, if you were taking the boat up out of the water onto the trailer, you would want to make sure that you have the centerboard raised up all the way before you do that. So you're not banging it on stuff. 
the good thing is if you do forget to do that um, it pivots backwards up like that so even if I didn't raise it and I brought it up onto the trailer the trailer would push it up for me um, you know not ideal but it works just fine but it's especially important for beach launching if you are beach launching this boat you want to make sure you are always aware of how deep this is um, I'm not sure exactly how deep it goes but I would imagine it probably sticks down I don't know at least three feet probably um, beneath the bottom of the boat so if you're coming into the beach you want to make sure you have that raised up or you could raise it up gradually to kind of match the the slope of the, of the beach there now if you're like me and you're lazy and you don't want to take out your main sheet just to transport the boat what I do is I just leave it attached to the boom like this as I'm taking the boom off and I just cinch it down all the way like that just to kind of tighten up the boom to the center of the boat here and I even usually cleat it and then if your boat is newer you won't have this big weird compass holder thing <laughs> and mine doesn't even have the compass um, but I do use this to store my rope so you could maybe attach it with a bungee somewhere if you had the Barney post with the aluminum you could maybe you know tie it to a hole or something but as for me I just roll it up like this and stuff it into this hole which you may or may not have on your boat all right just like that now the way I secure the boom to the boat so it's not just flailing around as I drive down the interstate <laughs> I use this bungee here and I wrap this end of the boom to the hiking strap just like this I just kind of bungee it like that and I won't do it yet because I still have to take the mast down and all that but to provide some cushion I use this PFD here I just fold it in half like that so it's thicker and I wedge it up underneath between the boom and the boat like that. And I can kind of cinch it up towards the bungee like that. And that keeps it pretty secure. Um, I drove a thousand miles with this boat behind my car like this and there was no issues. So this definitely works. All right, now it's time to take down the mast. Now, the general order of things here is you want to make sure your halyard lines are all tied up so I've already got the jib line tied up there and I use that extra length of jib halyard to tie other things and I'll do that in a moment but first let me just make sure that my main halyard is appropriately attached to this guy so I like to make sure it's nice and tight and then I, I just tie, you know, any kind of knot will work. Um, but I attach it to the um, I attach it to the um, the whisker pull, whisker pull bracket right here. Um, just keeps it out of the way, keeps it nice and organized um, for when I'm lowering the mast and putting it up. Now at this point, you will want to grab that yellow strap. Well, yours might not be yellow <laughs> and it might not even be a strap. You could just use a rope if you wanted to but I'm gonna use this guy. 
and just put it there so it's ready for when I need it. First thing, I like to take off the shrouds. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Take off the, the pin, the retaining ring. If you've got yours properly tensioned, you'll probably have to pull down quite a bit to loosen it to get the pin out. And then I just keep the pin on the chain plate here just to make it easier. Um, one of these has fallen out in transit, um, but they're pretty cheap to replace. So if you're super perfectionist, you might want to take it out and put it in a box in your car or something, but I'm fine just leaving it on there. I like to move the shroud spreader forward like that just to keep it out of the way and keep it hanging towards the center. Same thing with the other side. Now at this stage in the game, I will go ahead and attach my strap here. Now you want to pull, pull it up like that so the mask comes as far forward as possible so that when you tighten it, your force stays loose. And that makes it very easy to take off. Now the mast is standing, um, but I think it's worth noting that it is pretty weak right now, because right now all the support is just this strap, which is way down, and the mast partner, which is just a piece of wood. <laughs> so you don't want to be like, you know, yanking on the trapeze line or anything like that, because you might end up still breaking something. Um, but as long as you just leave it there, it's pretty stable. Uh, I mean, I can shake it around like that. It's not gonna move. All right. But now comes the point in time when I would like to tie all of my wires to my mast. Now, the way I do that is I use my jib halyard rope here to tie the forestay, the shrouds to the mast and then the bungees and rope and stuff like that to tie the wires over all of that also to the mast. So first I'll go ahead and cinch down this guy on this guy right here. And then I will take the two shrouds hanging down along with the forestay and I'll kind of hold them all right here, like that. And I'll take this rope, hold that as well, and then I'm gonna wrap it around a few times. I went back over the same rope to cinch it down, and I just do that a couple more times. On this wrap, I hold it open on the back like that, so I can then pass the rope again through it once more, just like that. And then I cinch that down. It's kind of like a giant clove hitch, sort of. <laughs> but now these are all tied.
tied to the mast. And with this extra length of rope, I just loop it down here and I tie it, I cinch it down nice and tight, just like that. I'll do a half hitch here. And let me come over to this guy and do the same thing. Now this, just as it is like this, I drove like a thousand miles, I didn't loosen or anything. So this system works if you don't already have one. Um, uh, now, time for the trapeze lines. So the way I do that is I take this small section of rope, it's like a foot and a half maybe, maybe two feet. I just tie it around the mast like this, pretty loose. I'm not tightening it down or anything. Um, and I forget what kind of knot this is called, so I apologize. But, I mean anything that stays will work, but I use that knot. And I have that tied around the mast there so that when I unclip these guys, like so, I can then bring them together, put the dog bones up like that, over the handle so they're all together like that. I slip this loop knot over them and then I go ahead and cinch it down like a tourniquet with this foot length of PVC pipe. And I just like tighten it, maybe go eight turns or so, and that's very tight. Same thing, this also lasted on my thousand mile journey. <laughs> and to prevent this from undoing, you could either tie a second rope or use bungees like what I do here. And I just do one on either side, like that, just to keep it from moving. Now the mast is all tied up, there's no loose lines or anything, it's time to lower the mast. Also probably the hardest part. <laughs> so the way I do that, I sit here, I hold the webbing strap here, loosen this guy so I can undo it still holding like that. I bring myself around. And so now the only thing supporting the mast is my hand right here. And I go ahead and lean up against it with my shoulder like this so I can use both my hands to take out the strap from underneath all the wires and whatnot and just leave it there for now. All right, the hardest part. The hardest part of the whole thing. So, no joke, you wanna make sure you can map out your steps because I said it before, the mast is not that heavy, um, but because it's so long, it's about 22 feet long, um, the inertia on that thing is really difficult to deal with. So if it starts falling on you, it can be hard to catch. So you just wanna make sure you've got yourself really stable, wide feet across the boat, and as you start to lower it, just take very slow steps back. So it's lowered a little bit. I hold it here. I map out my next step. There. Lower it some more. Map out my next step. Here. Now I can start inching backwards. Mapping out each step just to make sure we're good. I'm now straddling the rudder here. Just keep inching backwards, and I'm going really slow just to show you. Um, once you do, once you do this a couple times, it becomes a lot easier. And at this point, if you're really awesome, you could find a way to step off the boat and take off the mast all in one swoop. I find that kind of difficult, so what I do is I bring the mast down to my side like this holding it just like this, put my hand out here, 
and I'm gonna pull back with both hands backwards like this. And the mass is gonna come up and wanna fall back. I'm just gonna slowly let it back down until the top of the mast is on the ground. So like this, supporting the mast, going down, there we go. So not too hard, but it does take coordination and a plan. Now at this point, I can move the mast up onto the little, I don't know what you call that, the tower. <laughs> Walk the mast up, place it up on that little V thing there, and then lay it down. Now, if you're on a slope, your mast might start to slide a little bit. Usually mine doesn't, but sometimes it does. Now, the first thing I do is I like to use this um, this cleat here, I like to use the whole of this cleat to run this little Velcro webbing strap through it, and then I wrap it around the bolt. See, it just slid right, right there, but I wrap it around the bolt right there so that it, it, it can, uh, one sec, there we go, so that I can attach it nice and snugly to the tower here. So the way I do that is I just poke this guy through, pull it through, just like that. And then I wrap it around. Like this. And this also survived the 1,000 mile journey. <laughs> so if you're questioning its reliability, I can tell you it's pretty good as long as you get a quality Velcro strap. So as you can see with the shape of my tower um, little seat here, I kind of have it wrapped around this part, this nub part of it. I've got it on the bolt as well, just for security, around the back, up around this part and then over the mast just like that and this this ain't gonna move at all um it can slide a little bit but that will be taken care of once i secure the back of the mast and now for added security i use these two bungees just in case now i go ahead and put this long one up over the mast in front of the in front of the cleat there so that it doesn't slide back and I hook them onto this pole here or this bar or I guess it's more of a bolt of my winch here same thing with this red one but I put it up on the front here and these are just kind of like just in case the velcro breaks and that works great now for this end now I've seen many people who have built sort of a DIY tower that can fit into these brackets here where the rudder normally sits. And I used to have one, but I foolishly built it out of wood, so it didn't last very long. Um, but what I do now is I just use this buoy to give some cushion to the mast over the transom here. I just kind of make it somewhat center. And then I will be tying it down and cinching it over this buoy with these drain holes in the transom. And I actually use this line, which is the same line I use as the dock line on the bow of the boat. So multi-purpose. Highly recommend doing multi-purpose everything. It just saves materials and time and makes life easier. But what I do here is 
I insert the rope down out the back of this drain hole here and I tie a fat stopper knot, really fat. I kind of do like a figure eight with an extra step, which has served me very well. Um, yep, just like that. As you can see, that ain't going through. What I, now what I do first is I make sure it's going over like this so I can go in the other hole. Let me just do that real quick. This is a little tedious, but I'll say it again. This also lasted my thousand mile journey across the country, so it works. It works pretty well. And it didn't even get loose. I thought at least it would loosen up a little bit, but it did not loosen at all. It was very strong. I was impressed. So you had this X like this through up back this way. And then what I do is I put it back up through this hole. So let me just do that. And then after this step, I usually cinch it down a decent amount because there's enough friction for it to kind of hold. The good thing about the buoy is because it's inflated, you can cinch it down a little bit and the, the inflation of the buoy will kind of help keep it cinched tight, even though it's just a rope. Um, so the way I do that is I just take the line, follow it through, press down, pull, take all the slack out just like that this is already very tight but we're not done so first what I do now is I go over like that cross and then around this again and I mean I've done a few different variations of this it doesn't really matter exactly which way you go about it but as long as you've got you know basic lashing principles down you'll be fine like this now what i do is i go around and i weave it over the buoy under the mast over the buoy like that and i go around one full turn like that and at this point i'll cinch it nice and tight adjust if need be but cinch nice and tight if there's any extra don't worry too much about it, it'll figure itself out. Then I'll go up over like this. I'll wrap around each side of the buoy a couple times to provide more natural cinching power. Just like this. Now what I do is I put the remainder of the rope up through this hole again and I tie a simple overhand knot but I walk it all the way down so I keep tension on it this is the knot right here as you can see but I've got to keep tension on it so I can feed the rope through pushing it all the way down like that Yep, just like that. Getting all the slack out that you possibly can to keep it nice and tight. There we are. And that ain't getting through. This is completely unnecessary, but it just makes me feel better. just for added security. Not really a big deal, but there we go. Now the boat is almost 
ready to be towed away. Last step for transporting the boat somewhere. Make sure you've got yourself a good ratchet strap that you can use to tie the boat down to the trailer. Hook into that eye hole there, over the boat, over the boom, but under the mast and all of its, its lines there. And I walk around. Make sure the webbing is flat as you bring it up over. Hook into this side and then cinch it down. So, pretty loose. A little tighter, pretty tight. So, I usually tighten it enough to where um, I can move it, but it's pretty tight. That way, there's enough wiggle room to where it doesn't snap on you just because the boat hits a bump on the road or something. And I don't think it ever will. I mean, this is a strong strap and the boat doesn't weigh that much, but just in case. And then with the extra webbing, I just cinch it underneath the strap like that. And that isn't gonna move. All right. Now the first thing I always do before I put the boat in the water, obviously, is putting in the plug. Now, if your boat's like mine and the original screw-on plug broke off, fell out, etc., a fix that I found that works really well is this little automotive plug. The, the screw type with the bolt on top, you tighten it down and it just squishes the rubber so it expands. Um, this is three quarters of an inch. So I assume the hole is the same size. What I had to do first was this originally had some plastic threads in there. So I just took a flathead screwdriver and a mallet or a hammer. And I just kind of like chiseled those all out. And once those were cut off, I just took some sandpaper and smoothed it all down really nice. So it's just a smooth hole. So now we can just slide this guy in there. And the first time I did it, it was pretty tight, but you can wiggle it in there pretty nice. You can even use this guy to wiggle it back and forth. And once it's most of the way in, you can just tighten it down a few turns. And this is never coming out. In fact, this might even be a stronger seal than the original. Um, yeah, and then you are supposed to take it out when in transit. So every time I leave, I always take it out again, like this. Just like that. And that does it. I think I covered everything. Um, but of course, if you have any specific questions, you can just ask me and hopefully I'll have some sort of an answer. Um, but yeah, I tried to cover everything about rigging up the boat, the steps of, you know, stepping the mast and all the sails and stuff like that. Um, taking the boat up out of the water um, and even the boat plug. So hopefully that covers everything and hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching.